Breaking news, another mass shooting in California, this time in Half Moon Bay, about 28 miles south of San Francisco. Seven people killed at multiple locations. At least one other person is critically injured. A suspect is in custody, and San Mateo County Sheriff's Office has identified him as 67-year-old Chun-Li Zhao, a Half Moon Bay resident who they believe acted alone. The motive is still unclear. I want to bring in CNN's Camilla Bernal for the very latest. Camilla, I mean, it's hard to believe we're talking about another shooting in California, this time in Half Moon Bay. What can you tell us? So we know that it is one shooter who went to multiple locations. This happened at around 2.22 local time this afternoon. And we were told that the suspect went to the first location and shot five people. Four of them killed at that location, one of them critically injured. Then he went to another location about a mile apart and he killed another three people. Now, we have been told that this was a mushroom farm. Authorities are calling it a nursery. In general, it is an agricultural area and police had not made an arrest until about 430 in the afternoon. That's when this suspect was spotted at the sheriff's substation. Now, we know that it was a plainclothes officer who saw this suspect, who saw the car that they were looking for. And I was speaking to my colleague, Josh Campbell, who pointed out this was not the massive SWAT team operation that we saw in Southern California. This was an officer who you see there wearing a tie and taking this man down and arresting him. Josh Campbell also pointing out that they did not seek cover. They were not hiding behind cars. Instead, they thought that this was an arrest that was safe enough to make at the moment. We know that he was taken into custody. They recovered a semi-automatic handgun after this arrest. We know he is cooperating with authorities. The DA's team is interviewing that suspect at the moment, uh, but we know he acted alone. Authorities saying there is no threat to the community, yet they have not given us a motive. They are working on it, but so far they say they do not know why this happened, Laura. Do you know anything about him in particular? We don't have the motive yet. We have his age as the picture. Sure. Anything we know about him in particular? So we know he is a Half Moon Bay resident, and authorities believe that he was an employee at one of these nurseries. We also know, according to authorities, that they believe that the people he killed were also employees in this area. Again, 67-year-old resident of Half Moon Bay. He is in custody. Authorities are speaking to him at the moment, so hopefully we get more clarity on why he did this. Camilla, thank you so much. I want to bring in now Assemblymember Mark Berman of California's 23rd District. Assemblyman, I mean, such a tragedy. And it's unbelievable to think about the pacing of such tragedies. But how is your community grappling with this tonight? Laura, thank you for having me. There's, there's shock. There's shock and disbelief uh, that this happened in, in Half Moon Bay in such an idyllic uh, part of San Mateo County of Northern California. And I'll tell you, uh, at 2.22, or just before 2.22, I was on the steps of the California State Capitol with my colleagues for a vigil for the Monterey Park victims. And then I made my way over to my office, and, and I see on social media that there was that there was a mass shooting in my district. And, and so it is happening far too often, and communities are, are scared. Um, and we're going to do everything that we can to support them, uh, you know, t tonight and, and in the days, weeks, and, and months ahead. No one ever thinks it's going to happen in their hometown. But with the rise and the prevalence of gun violence in this country, has your community developed in, or the law enforcement collectively? Had there been training or a plan of some case and kind in case this were to happen? Have you had to adjust to that cold reality? Yes, uh, and, and we're very fortunate. San Mateo County is one of the best run counties in the state. Uh, and, and they have, as, as we saw on the video, uh, you know, a remarkably professional sheriff's department that covers Half Moon Bay and covers the coast side uh, of San Mateo County. Um, and, and they were able to apprehend the suspect quickly and without any more death uh, to anyone else. Um, but for, for, you know, it, it, it's, cr I had a couple of uh, school classes up in the Capitol last year. And when I asked them, what's the one thing that you'd like to change in your community? There were two different groups. In the first group, these were fourth grade students, 10 year olds. And the first group, the first thing they said was no more shootings in schools. Mm. 
the second group, the third thing they said was no more shootings in schools. The, I wasn't th dreaming of that nightmare when I was a 10 year old. Uh, and, and so it unfortunately has uh, really permeated every, every aspect of society and, and we need to do more uh, to protect our communities. I mean, you talk about children. I, I have a 10 year old and an eight year old and to know that part of their school day at some part during the year has to entail having what we used to have as a fire drill they have to have active shooter training or a kind of response. It really is unnerving to say the very least. But there are also, I understand, children at the scene. This was not at a school. What do you know about the presence of children at this shooting scene? Yeah, there's, it, it was farm worker housing. Uh, and, and there are a lot of, we have a lot of farming and agriculture on the coast uh, and, and farm worker housing where the whole family lives. And one or two people of the family maybe work uh, on the farm, but, but everyone else, including children, live there. And so it's tragic. It's tragic to think, uh, you know, that, that, and we're still learning details uh, about the victims, but that we can only assume that mothers and fathers and sons and daughters were, were killed far too soon. Um, and and the, the fact that their own families were nearby uh, it just makes it that much worse. So it's it's really a senseless gun violence that we have uh, in in uh, the United States that's so different from anywhere else in the in the country. Do you happen to know why they believe this was targeted? I mean, we don't have the motive or this precise motive, but any any indication as to why they believe it was targeted? I, I don't know yet, to be honest. I'm sure that information will come out soon, but um, but I don't know. We'll have to see what's happening as as this all unfolds, Assemblyman, I mean, just the thinking about the, as you said, being on the Capitol, you know, just honoring as a vigil the loss of life in another community, only to have it happen on your front door. Thank you so much tonight. We're thinking of your community. Thanks so much, Laura. I want to bring in former FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe and retired LAPD Sergeant Cheryl Dorsey is with us here as well. You know, a, a lot happening as we get the information, and, and it truly is unfolding. I want to begin with you, Sergeant Dorsey, because you've got two mass shootings, frankly, days apart in California. Monterey Park was one, now Half Moon Bay. Um, I, why has this become so common? And do you think, as my um, our, our colleague earlier spoke about, Charles Ramsey, that there is a fear that people may become desensitized to what's been happening? I think we're already there. And I, I wonder if in the instance of this shooting in Half Moon Bay, if this is like a copycat. I mean, it, obviously there was a lot of press about what happened here in Monterey, California. It was a, an Asian man who victimized um, other Asians. And now we have something very similar in Northern California. Is this someone who's been stewing and brewing and had angst over an issue and decided, you know what? I think I'm going to do that very thing that we just heard about in Southern California. Sometimes, you know, I know that there's a reason why the news puts information out there, but I wonder if we really need to know every single thing that occurs. That's an important point. And our colleague of mine, Shan Wu, earlier was just speaking about this, Andrew, the idea of not immediately discounting the possibility of hate crimes simply because the person is of the same race of some of the victims, that there could be the same type of animus, gender-wise or otherwise, race-wise and beyond, that can't be discounted. But to Sergeant Dorsey's point, um, the availability of information, the need for transparency, at least in the consuming, you know, um, court of public opinion, do you think that that can at times weigh against the ability to stop crimes like this? You know, that's hard to say, Laura. It's it's totally understandable that communities are looking for answers to questions like what motivated this person to commit this horrible act. It's a way of understanding uh, or assessing future danger. Is there is there something else out there that we should be worried about? Uh, we want to kind of be able to categorize these things in our own mind and kind of uh, put them into a, a particular or box in terms of the way that we understand them. And so the thirst for information to understand things like motive and intent uh, is is really uh, never ending. However, our, that leads to the sort of coverage that we're doing right now, that we did over the weekend, that we always do around these events that that could, in fact, serve to draw more attention to these individuals and to their methods and their equipment and their guns and everything else. So it's really hard. We're, uh, we're in a very tough spot in terms of trying to bring people the information they reasonably seek, 
uh, but also trying to assess whether or not that's ultimately harmful. It's, um, I, I think it's, the answer to that question is way beyond me.